In this series, I'm going to be learning how to lead climb outdoors here in Australia's beautiful Blue Mountains. It's a 50 meter grade 21 pitch out of Pierce's Pass called Mirabal. It looks impressive and looks really, really high. Oh, my heart's racing a little bit. We've given myself exactly eight weeks to develop all the skills necessary to overcome this challenge, which I'll be bringing you guys along for. I don't think there's any way I'm making it up, but we'll see, I'll give it my best shot. And we're here for day one of training at Climb Fit Kirrawee. Climb Fit Kirrawee is one of the newer lead climbing gyms in Sydney and indoors is still the best place to learn how to lead climb so hopefully we get you focusing on the, all the safety aspect of what we're doing today and not stressing out too much about the climbing itself. Good place to start, Very much safer so. place to learn to lead climb uh -huh. and there's a lot to learn. We went through a little bit of how to clip a rope in a carabiner or a quick draw last time yeah. so we're going to do a refresher on that just get you really comfortable with that idea and uh, all, all the communication stuff wording, what to say, checks, not safety. Today's really, for me, about getting you comfortable with, with lead climbing. Learning how to, I guess. Exactly, yeah. and, and the safety in falling is a big thing, and that's something that's it's harder to do on a, on a vert wall, so. Yeah. Figure eight is kind of the go-to knot for safe roping. So how I get the right length for my figure eight is it's usually about an arm's length. I've got a long arm, but you know, about that much. Then I'm going to get and I'm going to just put the, the, the tail end of the rope behind in a little loop and I'm going to pinch this in one spot so that it doesn't move. And that way I can control the length of the rope. I go behind and in the back and then I've got my figure eight. You can see where the name of the figure eight comes from. It is like an eight. And that is where you would thread this through your harness. And then we're just going to re-thread our figure eight as the name entails. Now, if the rope goes down in the hole, we want to be going down on the outside following this around in the shortest pattern possible. So this comes on top, comes back around, and again, follows that rope all the way through. You want this loop to be as short as possible generally, so you're not wasting any rope. I think the real bonus of the figure eight is that it's really easily, unmistakably correct when you tie it. Whether it's my knot or somebody else's, I can easily inspect it. We're gonna go through some how to clip a, a rope. If it, you just have a loose piece of rope, it's good to practice because when you clip the rope, you can then just pull it through. And so what we need to learn how to do really well is to clip the rope into the carabiner ambidextrously and back to front. So if the quick draw is facing this way, we need yeah. to do like this yeah. with our right hand and like this with our right hand. And then if the quick draw is facing this way, we need to be able to do this with our this, this hand and this with our this hand. Uh -huh. If you back clip, which is you take the rope and you clip it in such a way that the rope that you're clipped into is clipped backwards, mm. and then you climb up above the quick draw and then you fall, you die. Whoops. <laughs> so we're gonna, I'm gonna be really on to you about, okay, uh, is that a back clip? Is that a normal clip? This side, the rope that goes to you needs to be pointing towards you. Like that. Correct, Amundo. Because this is dragging all beneath that, me? Yeah, that's below you. Pick I'm on belay down there. Yes. Middle finger? Yes. Oh, he's done it. That's, that's good. So let's go dominant hand in the other direction. This is the slightly more difficult. Uh, Mm, yeah, 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 that'll, that'll work. Um, still grip, but then... Look, that wasn't quite as smooth, mm -mm. But, but I'll give it to you. You can use your thumb on the back and kind of hold the rope in these two and... See how the rope is in between your fingers? If you just nestle it in between the crease but still on the front of your fingers. Not bad, you don't want to get your fingers stuck in there if you can avoid it. Okay, so what I think you should do is you should practice left hand, right hand, maybe try and do five each as quickly as you can. Find the thing, push it through, keep climbing. Mm. When you're belaying someone lead climbing, mm. I guess it's harder than top rope, right? Because you're having to constantly adjust between pulling slack and then giving them more rope. Yeah, it's far more complex. Top roping is a bit like fishing. You're just kind of always reeling, reeling in the slack. In Lead climbing is something that's very difficult to belay if you can't see your climber. If yeah. the rope is tight and they're above the bolt, you can be actually pulling them off the rope. So as a lead belay, you really need to be onto it. You need to be making sure that they are unrestricted in their movement, but that there they're is... Not so much slack, but if they fall, they fall really far. Exactly. Very good. Great one. I got you tight there. You can let go and I'll lower you back down. Okay. Good job. What do I call? 
So when you get the anchor, if your belayer can't see that you've clipped the last thing, yeah. you would yell take, and then they would take you up tight. If they weren't already kind of lowering you by default, you can just yell lower. Say we're on a ledge, and or there was potential danger, I'd want to communicate with you that you were okay that I was going off belay. So I would say safe, yeah. you'd say safe, yep. Safe. And then I'd say off belay. And that's when I come to my grigri, undo my thing. And now my life is no longer in your hands. Yeah, and yeah now you're, yeah, if you fall off the cliff, it's on you. Now I was gonna ask, while I'm on the wall, yeah. if I need more rope, yep. I would slack. 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 If you don't want me to take it and you don't want me to hold the rope extra tight, but you you want you're going to try and do a move and you think you might fall, yeah, you'd say watch me. It just means like pay extra attention to me right now. And uh, your belayer who might be having a chat, hopefully not, or yeah. distracted by something, yeah. is giving you 100% of their focus and they're going to just be ready for the fact that at whatever point you might fall off. Which yep. is how belayers should be all the time, but the reality is that's not that's not always the case. Good, great flagging with the back foot. It's excellent. Yeah, that's well done. Avoiding the rope. What do you say? Take. Okay, lower. Nice one. That was fun. Good one. Thanks. On the final climb yeah. in Mirable yes. in the Blue Mountains, yeah. I might be, if I make it up, 45, 50 meters. Yeah. For every four bolts here, you have two. So at max, I could fall the distance of between three bolts. We're probably talking a maximum of kind of nine-ish meters, which would be massive. And let's hope that that doesn't happen. And that would be essentially from the top to the bottom. Basically, yeah, this wall, <laughs> yeah. That's a big fall. I want to touch on the importance of having an experienced and good belayer because the difference between an inexperienced belayer giving you a catch and an experienced belayer can be a world of difference. You're going to fall at your maximum velocity for the duration of the fall, but when you are stopped by the rope, it's how quickly you are stopped. You don't want to go boom and stop exactly where you are. You want the rope to stretch, that's why we have a dynamic rope, and you also want me as the belayer to add rope to the system. So I'm actually going to make your fall bigger but the deceleration is slower. Uh, and that's okay. what's called a soft catch. Great one. Oh, fuck. Come on, Ari. Okay, two hands there. Okay. All right, give us a little bit of a whip. Hmm? Yeah. Oof. Oof. Oh, that's a big pull. <laughs> that's pretty good. It's like bungee jumping. <laughs> Almost. Oh. That's good. All right, here we go. Yep, good. I'm glad you clipped there. Excellent. That was the, I think, the correct decision. Should be just the one out to the right. Yep, that one. Not the one, up, yeah. Where do I go from here? See if you can clip if you can. Woo. Here you are, no. That'll do. You're gonna have to spin around somehow. You're going, you want to go basically the direction your feet are hanging. Uh, oh, you've done uh, the thing. <laughs> three, yeah. two, one. Yeah, you can probably reach the rope now. Yeah. yeah. Pull up on that if you want. Yep. Oh, it's because it's going that way. Yeah. Nice one, Laurie. Use your feet as much as you can. Come on. Oh. Oh, fuck. I think you're doing well. You've certainly got the fight in you. I, I actually don't think it's a fitness issue. I think it's a, uh, a technique issue. You're certainly relatively fearless. You reckon? Yeah. And if you do this all the way to the top in the next go, you've two sat it because it, you've rest on the rope twice. If you could two sit this, I'd be very impressed. Okay, I'll do it then. Yep. Come on, Laurie. Come on, Laurie. That's the way. Come on. Come on, Laurie. To the top, son. All right. All right. You can do it. Yep. Woo. Nicely done. I didn't clip into the top one. That's good. Practice full. Getting comfy. I'm um, a little bit tired. But it's, it's been a really good session, actually. Yeah. I think I, a lot to learn, a lot of information. Um, it's been really good to understand how the process works. 
In the next episode, we're jumping into a few weeks of intensive technique training at Nine Degrees Bouldering Gym, where Jack, you'll be essentially teaching me how to climb. Yeah, it's gonna be a bouldering slash climbing masterclass, I hope. That's exciting. Well, I will, I will see you then, <laughs> so, man. Ah. So many bloopers. Yeah.